So what we're going to do this week is we're going to be continuing on the road to Alpha 2 Ashes of Creation series and I'm going to be jumping into what are commissions and everything you need to know about commissions to really utilise it the best you can during that Alpha 2 test and phase. So without rambling on, I'm just going to jump right into everything we know about commissions currently. So what are commissions? Commissions are simple quests with a single objective and that's to enable both characters and nodes to gain experience. So some examples we've seen from commissions, which I'll post on the screen now. So we had one that was called Restwell, Furry Friend, which was a level 7 commission to kill wolves or bears in the Riverlands. Then we had Scatter the Horde, which was a level 9 commission to cull the Minotaur Hordes. We also had Pond the Spire Pond, which was a level 2 commission to visit the Spire Pond. Now as well as a lot of these being maybe exploration or just some type of gathering or farming and teaching you aspects of the game, Game, it brings you out and about and obviously you could say oh are these just going to be the boring ones I'm sure they'll advance on this as we go through Alpha 2 but you've got to remember it's never going to be truly boring even going back and forth and farming certain things because everything connects with every other system and has a benefit and that doesn't even take into consideration the potential threats out there that aren't just PvE that are PvP players that will probably gank you just for the sake of ganking you or potentially try and farm you for resources. Now commissions are are the same for everyone who accesses the board in the node but who can accept them depends on the level and node reputation. Commissions do have different rarities, so far we've seen common, uncommon and rare commissions. The rewards you get for commissions do scale with rarity so a rare commission will be more rewarding than an uncommon one obviously, I mean most folk probably already gather that and the more you develop a node the more often these rarer commissions will appear so it's really giving you incentive to help develop nodes and get them leveled up just all in all to get towards that better end game content and faster or more progression as things slow down when say you use uncommon ones also in smaller groups at least you can still do the common and uncommon but if you like us and maybe more hardcore guild we will be wanting to push for the hardest ones and get involved in everything now as well as that commissions can influence conditions in the world and will also respond to them some of these conditions include weather time a day, story arcs going on in the world and even the events. They're also going to try and lead players into the areas where content is currently happening rather than areas that are currently inactive which is pretty fucking smart and it shows how long you know algorithms and software and technology and even UE5 what it can do and what it is capable of and this is the early days to see where this could potentially be post launch now I know I'm getting ahead of myself and really down the line I mean this game is going to be so fucking awesome and so vast so it is vital we get in utilize the best of the time we have and really give some solid feedback and help develop the game kind of minimize the workload and bug checks they need to do kind of get in and do the work for them because overall it benefits them and it also benefits us get a better fucking game and finally an mmo that is not absolute dog shit and these type of commissions that are available are also influenced by the type of social organisations, religious organisation and node policies that are active within the node. This is done to solidify the identity of the node and make it more dynamic and obviously more unique so every node has a, a kind of fucking nice different experience and the world's different like they were saying you know every server won't be the same. You can go to one server it'll have a different political history, a different story different things going on and I know this is just very small and one system but when you go again like I always banging about all these different systems intertwining with each other and connecting and synergistically working I mean you're really in for a fucking treat with Ashes now is there going to be a lot of bugs and shit with this I am sure there'll be some but I don't imagine it'll be as hard as some of the other systems to tweak and fix the bugs within but yeah it, it is sounding really nice and the changes that they've made over the past couple of years and the things they've tweaked I, I, I reckon the uh, consistently going in the right direction. I don't know whether they're basing this off a lot of feedback because some of it didn't have feedback or whether they're just advancing and saying, you know what, we can do better, we can one-up this, let's fucking push a bit harder on this and it, and it is really nice to see. Now, I understand without rambling on too much, I, I do compliment the game a lot. I do have a lot of negatives in some areas, but Stephen always says he doesn't want White Knight. Honestly, man, I, I do feel like a lot of time, a lot of the criticism is just people jumping on the bandwagon just to shit on the game for the sake of shitting on the game for some drama, some 
some views and I just think it's fucking pointless and I don't really think it benefits Ashes. I really do think we need to keep a logical mind and, and focus on what benefits Ashes and, and really not cry about the stuff that doesn't matter as much. What I will say is it is not unlimited so there is going to be a limit on how many commissions one player can have active at a time and the limit is currently set at 20 active commissions. Now the limit is just for commissions it doesn't affect picking up side quests or story arc quests and on a side note you do not have to travel back to the commission board to hand these commission quests in so for example new world you have something similar you know the town board which you could say is commission board and when you pick up these quests say from everfall you would have to go back to everfall to then hand them back in if you're on that other arse end of the map this isn't really the best whereas here it's shown that actually you can hand them in anywhere which i actually think is really nice especially with how limited the fast travel is in the game and how vast the game is that is definitely a plus and something that needs implemented and it's nice to see they've already thought of this so these are just the normal generated commissions however in the game you do have another type of commission system and these are the mayoral commissions which we'll get into now and i'll kind of dive into them a bit more so what are mayoral commissions and how do they even work well mayoral commissions are very similar to normal commissions they're still simple quests with a single objective however they are initiated by the mayor of a node rather than the server the type of commissions that are available are affected by the node type and the level even the location building choices and the predominant node race so there's a lot to take into account there and a lot of things it can change for the commissions which potentially makes it a lot fresher a bit much of a change and not so much rinse and repeat and each node yet again it will be slightly different in the commission system which kind of makes it less mundane and less repetitive for the mayor to be able to initiate mayoral commissions they must use gold from the node's treasury mayors are also limited to a certain number of commission slots at any one time so when you do the mayoral commissions both the node and the player also gets rewarded so obviously you know how the players are going to be rewarded but the node's going to be rewarded with node commodities node to node reputation mandates and even temporary buffs to buildings or zones this is also affected by how many players complete the commissions so obviously the more they do the better it is the less they do the worse it is players will receive experience node reputation node currency and some other miscellaneous rewards perhaps glint or something on the side like that which is also a nice money maker if you want to refer back to my previous video everything about glint and how to make gold in ashes of creation that's a nice short one to check out but really has some solid information and that's maybe where that could play in here as well both citizens and non-citizens can take part in the mayoral commissions but it is more a benefit when citizens complete them as only citizen contribution will generate the mandates mentioned in the node rewards hopefully that makes sense and hopefully the information there can kind of give you understanding a bit more how commissions work how they might combine into glint and how the alpha 2 systems we currently know we're going into work which kind of gives you that upper hand so say you going with your guild or your friends and you just know that you want to help develop this game and you want to give feedback that is why because some folk will be like well why do i need to know this it's not even a launch game it's just alpha 2 well if you really want to utilize alpha 2 in my opinion and you really want to push for the end game world bosses the dungeons the the life skilling or, or artisans professions whatever you want to call them classes archetypes all these things you need to be efficient in the time that's there because there might be bugs and wipes and the further you can progress in the game and the more harder in my opinion opinion you can go the more feedback they're gonna get the more the systems and the game will be pushed to its fucking limit meaning we can potentially break it or find issues and then Steven Intrepid the team the developers can really double down and work on this so in my honest opinion if you're playing solo these are things you want to know and you want to understand because it'll help if you're playing in a small team or maybe a decent sized medium sized guild like me or one of the zergs these are all things you should kind of get your guys knowing get them on get them understanding and get them up to speed so when you go into the game you can really maximize the time not just that you can have fun with it you can progress more efficiently and we can really help develop a fucking good mmo give solid feedback because alpha 2 could be one year one and a half year two year maybe longer i'm presuming it's going to be a year to a year and a half maybe more than the two year mark but either way it'll take as long as it needs to take but the faster we can progress through this and the more feedback 
feedback we can give, the better quality Beta 1 and Beta 2 will be, and inevitably it's gonna lead to a better quality launch game, and that's what we all want. We've all waited for a decent MMO or a fucking really good MMO to come, anything that's not paid to win garbage, and I personally believe this is our main and probably one of the only opportunities we can really help shape an MMO in this way. I don't ever think this opportunity or something like this will arise again, and I think we should really utilise the time the best we can and just get involved. Now, with that ramble out of the way, that kind of concludes this episode on the road to Alpha 2, and hopefully so far you are learning some. I will constantly keep pushing out this content to prepare guilds and people for Alpha 2, and generally just anyone who wants to learn about the game, and wants a bit more information broke down that's maybe been looked over, or maybe people don't see it as exciting, but this is vital knowledge and things you really want to deep dive into and look into and, and learn about. So as always, I really do appreciate you watching the video. Do hit that subscribe button because I've got a lot of people viewing, I've got a lot of people coming back, but at the same time, I've got a lot of people that aren't subscribed and I see some of the comments and some of them are from similar people on the videos previously and they're not subbed. So hit that sub button, really does help. There's a lot more content coming. Make sure you've got your notifications on, drop a like and let me know in the comment section below what you think, what's your feedback and the off chance in traffic do come across the video because they're taking feedback from everyone everywhere and they really do get involved in all aspects and levels of the community. I do really want to push for subs now, grow the channel, expand it out more, so if you can get involved in any of that, giving the videos a share, that's appreciated. But as always, I really do appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.